Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I'm at the Isaac M. Wise Temple in Cincinnati, Ohio, and with me is organist Michael Unger. Michael, thank you for letting us come in today. Great. Um, this organ is a Kinken and Company. Um, tell me yes. about that company. I don't really know much about them. This is the first of their organs I've seen. Sure. So they were organ builders uh, of German extraction. They came to the Cincinnati area um, in the 19th century. Um, Kinken had actually apprenticed with another Cincinnati, uh, German Cincinnati organ builder, okay. Matthias Schwab. Um, there's another instrument uh, in the area of his. Uh, but this is one of the, the largest and one of the best preserved of, of the Kinken school. Okay. Um, and we're really excited that it's here and excited in this temple. I am too excited has been taken care of. I can't imagine there's many of these left. To, to my knowledge, very, very few, but this, this is a, a wonderfully well-preserved instrument and NOAC did a lot of the restoration work in, I believe, 2005. All right. Well, it's um, I've heard a little bit of it, and it's 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 very gentle. It's not a it is it's very not an extreme that. organ, which yeah. is uh, interesting. But it's yeah. a it's a nice big room, but it fills the space yeah. from what I can tell. But I yeah. I wanted to start and uh, tell me what divisions we have here and what stuff. Sure, absolutely. So we have the the main division, the manual as it's called, uh, or the Hauptwerk of the Great, that's in the center here. Uh, we have the swell division up here, and the swell box actually a hook down swell pedal to uh, so the far right here of the pedal board, uh, and down here we have our uh, choir. Okay, well, let's uh, let's start with the grate. And sure. Just, uh, yeah. Tell me what we have in the grate. Sure. So, uh, right behind me here, we have our our principal uh, sixteen, our facade. <laughs> The, the foundation of the principal eight. But certainly of the 19th century uh, American and German tradition, we have a lot of eight foots <laughs> from which to choose and a lot of, of wonderful color variety among them. We have a viola da gamba. Flauta. Melodia. kind of uh, combinations of those eight foots. This yeah. yields such a different kind of uh, gentle uh, color bath, really. I can't go over how gentle and smooth those I are. They're all, all unique, but yeah. they all are just very gentle. They're right here behind us, yep. and yep. they still feel kind of far away. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's so interesting uh, as, as we think about the history of this instrument. I mean, this at the time of, of kind of organs being used in synagogues, I mean, congregational singing was something that they had maybe kind of borrowed mm -hmm. maybe from the Christian tradition, but it wasn't something that, you know, an organ was needed to lead robust song. This was something that was maybe to accompany a cantor, a small group of singers or a small group of instrumentalists. Okay. So that blending quality is And is you have so, some so space lovely. to fit us few singers up here. We do. So it's, you it's, wouldn't it's, have a huge choir. Exactly, or a huge, yeah. Okay. yeah a, small, a small balcony and we've had singers and instruments uh, up here in the past. So beyond the uh, eight foot, then we move to four foot in the grate. We have two. We have a principal labeled as octave. So with the eight foot principle. Or the four foot nachthorn or flute. Maybe 
combined with another V8 sure, for flutes. something different to each of those eight foot stuff. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so as we build up the, the so-called plenum uh, sound of this, yeah, we have our maybe 16, eight, four. Building it up maybe with our two foot, uh, Waldflotte. The two foot by itself, also pretty lovely, I think. But building it back up with, you know, 16, 8, 4, we also have a, a quint, 2 and 2 thirds. Leading up to what kind of function as mixtures, but not they're not actually mixtures. So a uh, sesquialter. Uh. It's got a bright, biting sound, but again, just very gentle and smooth and gentle and not, smooth. Not offensive at all. <laughs> Absolutely, it's kind of the name of the game of this instrument, really. Uh, uh, show me the sesquialterra just by itself. Uh, sure. To see what what yeah. kind of sound we're getting there? So it could be used as a with the other stops as sort of a solo voice if you wanted. To could be. That. It kind of could goes be. with the principle yeah. quality. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Uh, but we also, in addition to that, have a, a cornet, which is treble. Oh, here it is. So another solo possibility, just, or also to enhance part of the, the, yeah. the sort of treble register okay. of it. Yeah. Um, now, also building this up, if we wanted even more depth to it, there's also a low quint. Oh. Quint and low quint are so subtle compared to those upper yeah. uh, uh, mixtures, the upper sure. mutations there. That sure. It's interesting that they still felt the need to at least put a little something in there. Just a little depth, <laughs> just a little, yeah, a little groundedness to okay. it. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, very good. Yep. It's a, a unique sound there in that division. It's it's, it's really lovely. And and one reed stop that oh, we okay. have here, our, our trumpet. Given its quality, it can also be kind of included in our in our sort of plenum build up as well. Ensemble, absolutely right on top there. It doesn't, doesn't overpower it. No, nope. kind of blends right in with those other stops. So yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So that's our our great our manual uh, moving maybe down here. Sure, let's the go. Choir. Let's see what the choir yeah. has. So we have uh, an eight foot principal as well here. So maybe.
maybe in comparison to what we heard in the grave. Definitely much softer, yep. but similar in, in quality. Similar in quality, same, a, same a little period. more stringy yeah. in some ways, but, but and that's... I, I don't know how much of it's because the principal is right behind us true. that it sounds so much different, but out there those microphones will tell us. Yeah, true, 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 true. Um, but as well with that, with our eight foots, we have a good duct. So maybe compare it to what we heard in the grace. And I think the loveliest and the softest of all of this, the eight foot fugata. So maybe with the gedact. gentle just kind of disappears it does it does it's just the tiniest little bit of and then this this is all fully open and exposed so. yes exactly yeah the only division that's under any expression is the is the swell all right yeah, yeah. um we have uh four foot that's as high as we get okay. uh rank wise uh pitch wise in the choir four foot octave compared to the grades Minor little scale differences yeah. that, that make it uh, yeah. same quality, but but a different variety on that stop. So exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, an eight. Uh, excuse me, a four foot flute. So maybe with the eight foot gadak. Going back to the four foot octave with the eight foot principle. And we also do have a 16 foot as well, a oh, 16 really? foot flute. By itself. thin for something called a flute. Right, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. It yeah. goes all the way to 16, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So yeah, you've got, it's, a, it's a very complete chorus, but it's just kind of that's whispering. Just little, exactly, <laughs> a little more veiled. Very uh, and one reed uh, on this division, the oboe, curiously put it in the choir and not mm -hmm. in the swell. Uh, in the swell, we have a clarinet. Oh. One would imagine maybe they'd be reversed. Mm -hmm. Don't have an answer why, but here's the oboe. Maybe color to the eight foot flute. I have to admit, that's actually a little buzzier and louder than I thought it was going to be yeah. compared to the rest of the division. Sure. So you got a sure. nice solo voice that sort of sticks out it does. Uh, from there, but you can can color it with those other stops. Huh? Yeah, very nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, and so then we move up here to the swell. As I said earlier, we have a, a hook down swell pedal uh, to the far uh, extreme of the pedal board here, um, but it's, it does kind of uh, create a little bit of uh, very lovely dynamic shading. It's the division also that's farthest away. So if we have just you know our softest, maybe um, violin, or a solitional at eight foot. Or maybe the two of them together. It really just disappears. It does, it does <laughs> really, really beautifully. Uh, we do have an eight foot principle. to the other 
faithful principles yeah. that we've heard. Also, and disappear. Yeah. Um, uh, have we had all the eights? Maybe not. Maybe here's the cadet. to other stops of that same name here. You can really terrace things out between Quite. the three divisions. It's, a, yeah, it's interesting that the stop names are the same, but yet each one has a little bit of a different quality Just and a, a different volume character. level. It's exactly, yeah, yeah. So the they knew what they were doing. Yes. <laughs> I, I believe so, I believe so, yeah, yeah. Um, so those are the four eight-foots then that we have here on that uh, swell division, and they, again, just in, in the style of the time, they, they add just a tiny bit of color variation and blend so, so beautifully together. believe those three are a principal sound just they're sure by themselves yeah it a sufficient yeah. quality but absolutely uh, create something completely new out of <laughs> the, the blending of it is really something yeah uh, we do have a 16 foot 16 foot board in who could also add a little bit of depth to it. So then add to that the four foot octave. So maybe comparing that combination with you know, the others here. how much bigger the great seat was now yeah. in comparison to these smaller Absolutely. seats. And initially it, was, it felt a little soft. No, it's, it's, when it's, it's, it's small, it's small. It, it's, it's an incredible uh, uh, whispering mm -hmm. kind of range, the four foot octave by itself. Or the four foot uh, roll floats by itself. character to it, it the flute that's yeah. different from any of the other flutes that, yeah uh, the one that sticks out right 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 two foot flute well Similar in construction to the greats, the, the cornets. But in this case, a low pitch. Yeah. So it actually adds some gravity if we have the 16. A little sparkle on top of the yeah. The, the dull roar. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, lovely sounds. Yeah. Uh, and then as mentioned before, the, the clarinet on this division. Maybe colored with the eight-foot cadet. Oh, 
elbow. Versatile read there that you can. Absolutely, yeah. That's bright, buzzy sound, but buzzy also sound. lovely, a lovely clarinet quality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Works very beautifully in kind of a solo, solo line. Yeah. It's it, and obviously meant for blending with the other thing. Both, so, yeah. yeah. So you can yeah. get uh, a lot of different sounds out of that. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Is that everything in the choir? That's everything in in all these divisions okay. as well. Uh, choir and great in the pedal. Um, two different options for 16 foot suba. Stopped Gordon. No eight foot principal, but an eight foot string with the cello. at 16, 8, and 4. That's the four foot. I'm jaded by the rest of the organ, but that pedal division seems really big. Well, <laughs> it, it's, it adds to the gravity of it Definitely. for sure. It's and sort of surprising. Yeah, uh, um, so it doesn't necessarily always need a coupler to it, but it can. So without the coupler, so building it up with the great division. It's underneath it. I think it's just because the swell in the choir is so much softer. Sure. It seems like those are at the sure. place, but no, they work really well there. But even if I were to get some of the reeds away from that and just had, you know, the 16s and the 8, it, it, it doesn't overwhelm, I don't think, okay. from where I sit. It, it just sort of supports. very full. Exactly. So. Yeah, adds to the <laughs> possibility of gravity and, and depth. So. And this is a 25-note pedal board. Yes. Um, I know this isn't the only place where you make music. This is, is <laughs> it a challenge to go back and forth? <laughs> I, you know, I've, I've, I've come to love it. Um, the most striking thing for me, though, sometimes is that the middle C doesn't quite align. Mm. Um, they, they were just <laughs> slightly off the center, so it takes a little bit of um, orientation <laughs> reminder when I get back here, but but yeah. You have uh, four little toast spoons down there. What did those? So the, at food? present, not much, okay. but but I think in the past they were sort of designed to sort of bring out combinations. I see. Um, but at present, they're not. Okay. 
uh, workable or reliable. And then all these divisions can be coupled to yep. the grate, or to, can you couple swell to? Uh, you cannot couple swell yeah, to choir, so but it's all coupling the through the grate, and then can couple from the grate, therefore, down to the pedal as right. well. So we have yeah, choir to grate. And then, and then all three together creates kind of a massive. I imagine that's a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a fair amount of depth yeah. uh, to that touch, for sure. Well, this is uh, fascinating to, to hear and see. So yeah. I would love to hear how you uh, make some music with this. Okay, sure. So to get into the organ, we just go around and there is a door that takes us into the tower of the temple and you see the organ there all in front of us. The regulators and all of the winding system are completely new. We have two double rise regulators here weighted down with looks like stones from somewhere. And we go up the ladder to the first level. Here we are looking up from there. Great and choir are in front of us, and the swell is up the ladder. And we're up on that platform looking out through the facade. It's the swell up there, and this is the grate right here in the front of the organ. squeeze through between the trackers and the pipes so we can get a better look at the Great Division. And turning around and heading back out, we can see the motor that used to power the old blower would have been a belt-driven blower that sat right here. Now we've moved back to the choir. You can see there's a, well, at least one new wood pipe in the choir. Some pipes have been replaced. There's the oboe right there in the front, which, oddly, the bottom octave actually is cylindrical, like a clarinet. And now we're going to go up this ladder, and that takes us up to the level of the swell. And here we are, looking out through the facade of the organ. And not all of the swell pipes are in the swell. The bottom octave are actually outside of the box and aren't expressive.
Going back behind the swell box, we find the pedal pipes. Some of them anyway, tubed off. And here we are in front of the swell, and that's the swell clarinet bottom octave right there. Opening up the tuning access so you can see how we tune the clarinet and the swell. the other side and against the wall we have the reeds of the pedal division as well as some of the other stops if you look at the console of this organ it is on a platform with uh, rails and stairs there a couple of feet tall that's not original that was added originally the console was down on the floor the organ builders didn't know about this when they built the organ in the shop and so when they got it to the location the action didn't work so they had to build this action transfer device here to take the key and stop action and move it a couple of feet so that it would connect with the console that was lower that's all been replaced but they've retained that action here inside the chamber Michael, thank you so much for demonstrating so wonderfully this uh, Kirken organ from Kirken and Company. Kirken and Company, correct. From, uh, and there was a Kirken and Grimm is what some people attached to it. Mr. Grimm was involved. He was a, a sort of later addition okay. uh, in their personnel. But the so. name plate just says the Kirken and Company, but uh, it's a wonderful instrument to hear and it, I'm, this is a beautiful room and I'm glad the organ has been maintained along with this yeah. uh, beautiful space and, and continues to make music. Um, this is the last stop on our tour in Ohio. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward to the Organ Historical Society convention starting just very soon uh, so thank you for watching our videos thank you for following us along on our trip uh, and remember if you would uh, like to see more videos we have more coming out so make sure you're subscribed to our channel and click the bell for notifications and if you like this video please give us a thumbs up uh, until the next video is out you can always find streaming classical organ music on our three stations organlive.com positively broke and the organ experience Michael again one more time thank you thank you so much and uh, I'm Brent Johnson I'll see you next time <laughs>